Hi. Kingdom health, embracing God's power for wholeness. In today's study, we'll explore kingdom health through the lens of God's word. Our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to 20. And honoring him through physical and emotional well-being aligns us with his divine plan. From understanding healing to overcoming obstacles like unbelief and unforgiveness, this teaching, this study offers practical biblical wisdom for living in divine health. Join us in uncovering God's promises and embrace his healing power. Kingdom Health, embracing God's power for wholeness. Want to know more? Hang around. Welcome, welcome to Lions Roar 38 Ministries. Amos 38 tells us the lion has roared who will not hear or fear. The Lord God has spoken who can but prophesy. My name is George Magalhães and we are an apostolic ministry with a prophetic teaching edge. It is our mission, our passion to, be, to reignite, equip and release Christ-like disciples both locally and globally. We do that through our itinerant ministry, but as well as providing you with resources just like this one to help you, to aid you in your God-given calling. Today, we've got a great topic. We're going to be speaking about kingdom health, bringing us to our main verse today. And our main verse today comes from the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 to 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 19 to 20 and we'll be reading from the amplified classic version do you not know that your body is the temple the very sanctuary of the holy spirit who lives within you whom you have received as a gift from god you are not your own you were brought with a price purchased with a preciousness and paid for made his own so then honor god and bring glory to him in your body amen amen all right we've got prophet sabrina with us today again which is great before she gets on to the word today i just want to give you a little introduction of what we are going to be talking about today what we're going to be studying today for some of you that are arriving a little late this is your time to listen so in today's study we're going to be doing or touching on or uncovering studying kingdom health we are going to embark on a journey to discover how god's word reveals his desire for our physical and emotional well-being complete wholeness our key verse as we just heard is 1 corinthians 6 19 to 20 1 corinthians 6 19 to 20 reminds us that our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. When we care for our health, we honor God and align ourselves with his purpose for our lives. Psalm 103 verses 2 to 3 tells us that the Lord not only forgives our sins, but also heals our diseases. So as we explore kingdom health, we will uncover some of the whys of not always experiencing this blessing fully and how to embrace the healing he has promise. All right, let's pray and get on to it. Go for it. <laughs> All right. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just want to thank you for this time we are about to spend together, Lord God. We thank you for the word that is um, that we're going to be learning together, Lord God. We pray that it's word that brings forth fruits, Lord God, word that um, give glory to you, Lord God, and that it will fall on good soil, bearing the fruit, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lots of All right. All right. So like George um, was speaking before, today we're going to embark on a journey to discover the concept, image or belief of kingdom health through the lens of God's word. Now, our main verse reminds us that our bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit. By honoring our body with our, phys um, with our physical well-being and... Honoring God. Oh, by honoring God. <laughs> Sorry, by honoring God with our physical well-being and inner well-being, we align ourselves 
with his desires for us. So basically, you know, God wants us to be healthy, not just physically. We will check that out as it goes on. Not just physically, but also spiritually and emotionally. A healthy body reflects his intention for our lives, showcasing his goodness and grace. When we embrace health, we truly celebrate the blessing he has bestowed upon us. Now, kingdom health is definitely and totally rooted in God's desire and promises regarding our well-being, like I said, both physically and emotionally. As we explore his words, we can uncover insights into why we may not fully experience this blessing. Right? All right. So as I said at the beginning, we're talking about kingdom health, and I'm just going to break it down a little bit further so you understand what we are going to be studying today. So in the next section, which is called our study, we will be covering, unraveling, revealing more specifically the following relevant topics. Mm -hmm. First one is what is healing? What is healing? And in this main topic, we will briefly contrast the difference between healing and miracle as subtopics. Healing and miracle. Mm -hmm. The second one is the right posture for healing. The right posture for healing. Number three is why sickness? And in this main topic, why sickness, we will reveal some of the most common casualties to sickness and therefore hindrances to healing. And some of these include A. Unbelief. B. False teachings. C. Unforgiveness. D. Unconfessed sin. E. Lack of knowledge. F. Gluttony. And G. Eating disorders. All right. And number four, which will be our last main topic we cover today, is... Practical points for healing. Practical points for healing. In this main topic, again, we will reveal a few subtopics to consider when seeking healing. So A will be the initial condition. B, desire for healing. C, instructions and obedience. D, gradual process. And E, spiritual transformation. All right, you ready? Let's get started, right? Amen. So number one, what is healing? Now, the American Heritage Dictionary defines healing as the process of restoring health and alleviating emotional distress. Now, I'll just put it in one sentence, but it was um, as they're doing dictionary, they separate it. Now, today, healing is an increasingly important topic in our lives, impacting us both emotionally and physically. We can, I mean, every time you look on social media, you, you meet someone, the first thing you hear is, hi, how are you, right? Because it matters so much. Fortunately, kingdom health as revealed in the word of God offers a powerful solution for both aspects of our well-being. The living word of God is a healing power we need to attain this. Healing in the word of God can be understood in two distinct ways, as a miracle or as a healing. Now, miracle often acts, or, or in, wait, miracle often involve acts that go beyond the natural order. But not every miracle pertains to healing. We all know that. Some miracles may involve other divine interventions. While healing, typically, focuses on restoration, either physically or emotionally. Let's look as, at them um, as a miracle. Many of us are familiar with the account of the man who was blind from birth and how Jesus restored his sight. This event was a miracle as it transcended the natural order. Why? Because see, he was born blind. It's it's not something that he, he, he could see before and then he got, uh, he got healed. It's a miracle. It transcends the natural. Let's confirm that, right? Do you want to read the verse? John 9 verse 1. In John 9 verse 1 in the Amplified Classic, we read, As he passed along, he noticed the man blind from his birth. Now, if you continue the story in John 9, 10 to 11, John 9, 10 to 11, he tells us, So they said to him, 
How were your eyes opened? He replied, The man called Jesus made mud and smeared it on my eyes and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and I obtained my sight. Mm. Whereas as a healing, in the next account, Peter heals a lame man by saying, In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Now the healing restores the man's physical condition, showcasing a direct act of healing, rather a miracle that alters natural order. Let's confirm that. Do you want to read it? Acts 3, 6 to 8 in the Amplified Classic. Acts 3, 6 to 8 tells us, But Peter said, Silver and gold, money I do not have. But what I do have, that I give to you in the use of the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Then he took hold of the man's right hand with a firm grip and raised him up. And at once his feet and ankle bones became strong and steady. And leaping forth, he stood and began to walk. And he went into the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. Amen. So now, now that we've seen the difference between what is healing and miracle, so we understand, right? Because there is this misconception saying, you know, oh, um, do I need healing? Do I need a miracle right now? And, and how does that look? It's just a small understanding for everyone. So we know when you know you can tackle something. When you don't know, it's hard to tackle something, right? Point number two, the right posture for healing. Is there such a thing? Absolutely. I believe there is a wonderful way to position ourselves for healing and everything else when it comes to God. I mean, we need to be to to have reverence, to have an awe of God when we approach Him. He's God Almighty. Approaching God with the right heart and attitude can make a significant um, difference in our journey toward wholeness. Essentially, the way you perceive God influences how you receive from Him, right? So, if you view Him as someone you must plead with for healing, you might find yourself in a cycle of begging, because that because that's all you're gonna you're gonna keep doing because that's how you see Him, right? It's essential to understand that your healing is already accessible now. Of course, that, um, what I've just said before doesn't just apply for healing. How you see God is how you're going to receive the blessing he has set for you. And that encompasses every area of your life. That's another subject for itself. So, like I said, it's essential to understand that your healing is already accessible and ready for you. It is available to everyone who calls on Jesus' name and is for this moment. It is for now. It is important to keep in mind that one of the names of the Lord is Jehovah Rapha, which means I am the Lord, the great physician, the healer. This name reflects the wonderful and redemptive nature of God. Thank God for it, right? Additionally, healing is included in the complete, uh, completed work of Jesus Christ on the cross, just like our salvation. Let's confirm that, right? 1 Peter 2.24. If you read 1 Peter 2.24 in the Amplified Classic, he personally bore our sins in his own body on the tree as on an altar and offered himself on it that we might die, cease to exist, to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. Amen. So if all this, so if we understand that what this is healing, this is miracle, um, this is available to us. This is a, the, the desire of God for us. And so why is there sickness? That's our number three. Do you see my number, my, my finger saying number three? Yeah. <laughs> number three. So why sickness? According to the word of God, there are various reasons why someone may be sick. At its core, sin is a fundamental cause of sickness. However, it is important to acknowledge that some individuals may also experience illness due to a lack of self-discipline in caring for themselves. This involves not just physical health, but also emotional and social aspect. Now, we will cover some of the casualties of sickness and therefore hindrances to healing. A is unbelief. Unbelief. 
A lack of faith can obstruct healing. Believing in God's ability to heal is essential for receiving it. So unbelief can be a hindrance. Let's let's confirm it with the word of God, right? Matthew 9, 22. Matthew 9, 22, again in the Amplified Classic. Jesus turned around and seeing her, he said, Take courage, daughter. Your faith has made you well. And at once the woman was restored to health. See, what is what is uh, when it is unbelief? How do you counter, counteract it? With faith. That's why it's, the, Jesus said, well, take courage. Your faith has made you well. B, false teaching. Does that matter? Yes, it does. Acceptance of incorrect teachings about healing can create barriers. If someone believes that healing is not for today or that it's con contingent upon certain conditions, they will struggle to receive it. Again, it comes to a certain point of the way you see God is, is the way you're going to receive. Right? Let's confirm that with the word, right? Colossians 2 verse 8. Colossians 2 verse 8 in the Amplified Classic. See to it that no one carries you off as spoil or makes you yourselves captive by his so-called philosophy and intellectualism and vain deceit, idle fancies and plain nonsense. Following human tradition, men's ideas of the material rather than the spiritual world, just crude notions following the rudimentary and elemental teachings of the universe and disregarding the teachings of Christ, the Messiah. Right? Amen. C. Unforgiveness. Unresolved personal issues such as broken relationships or emotional trauma can hinder healings. Yes, it can. Unforgiveness leads to infirmities, and it can be seen in the case of someone who harbors deep resentment toward others. This individual might constantly replay the hurtful events in their mind, leading to chronic stress, anxiety. Over time, this emotional turmoil can manifest physically. Like, you know, I mean, if you do research, you will see even people who are not Christian would tell you, in the doctors, they would tell you that, oh, you know, um, they must have been stressed out a lot, so they end up getting cancer. Basically, it's basically offense that translated into cancer. There's many times that George and I pray for people where it's because of certain things that they haven't let go that manifested in certain ways physically in their life. That's what's causing the issue, and it's a matter of asking what it is to God. Can you confirm that, babe? Matthew 5... 23 to 24, Matthew 5, 23 to 24 in the Amplified Classic. So if when you are offering your gift at the altar, you there, remember that your brother has any grievance against you, leave your gift at the altar and go. First make peace with your brother and then come back and present your gift. Now that's just one verse. There's other verses that tells you that God won't hear you. That's another story. D, unconfessed sin. Yes, it is not the best thing to have in your life. Unconfessed sin can hinder one's relationship with God and affect prayer, as well as become an open door to sickness, a hindrance to op or obtaining your healings. Let's confirm that. Isaiah 59 verse 2. Isaiah 59 verse 2, Amplified Classic. But your inequities have made a separation between you and your God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that you will not hear. He will not hear you. Number E, lack of knowledge. Not understanding God's promises regarding healing can prevent individuals from claiming it. It's like not knowing what your right is and then you're standing in court. I'm sure you guys have heard about the court of heaven and all that. And you're standing in court. You, you, you got nothing to, to say, hey, you can't, you can't give me sickness. You can't accuse me, right? So a true revelation of healing as part of God's will is crucial to manifesting it in our lives. Let's confirm it. Hosea 4 verse 6. Hosea 4 verse 6 in the Amplified Classic. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge because you, the priestly nation, have rejected knowledge. I will also reject you that you shall be no priest to me, seeing you have forgotten the law of your God. I will also forget your children. That has got a lot into that verse. Really a lot. Number F, gluttony. 
Oh, we all know about those ones, right? There's a lot of like um, mukbang, is that what you call it? I forgot, where they just sit there with like a big platter of food and eat. Mm. Anyway, won't get into it. Right, gluttony. The Bible addresses gluttony by highlighting its negative in implication, emphasizing the importance of moderation and the dangers of excessive eating. So it's not, um, well, we keep going actually, read it. Philippians 3 verse 19, Philippians 3 verse 19 in the Amplified Classic. They are doomed and their fate is eternal misery, perdition. Their God is their stomach, their appetites, their sensuality, and they glory in their shame, siding with earthly things and being of their party. Hmm. And lastly, we have eating disorders. Now, the Bible highlights the importance of taking excellent care of our bodies, reminding us that we are temples of the Holy Spirit, which is what we have in the main verse today, right? While it may not specifically mention eating disorders, its teaching encourages us to honor and nurture our bodies in a positive and healthy way as honoring steward of God's temple. Let's read a verse for that. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to 20. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to 20. Do you not know that your body is the temple, the very sanctuary of the Holy Spirit who lives within you, whom you have received as a gift from God? You are not your own. You were bought with a price, purchased with a preciousness, and paid for by his own. So then, honor God and bring glory to him in your body. So even that, it can be a dishonor when you try to, to conform to the world and, and really starving the, the temple that God has blessed you with in order to conform to the world. That in itself will, of course, cause issues in our body because we all... Are not doesn't have the same constitution anyway that's we'll talk about that another time but let's continue number four you see number four here number four practical points for healing see i know i love to share this in our boost program that we have access to incredible solutions for all our needs and open book bible solutions right now healing is truly a journey that brings us closer to god fostering faith, obedience, and personal growth along the way. And it's all found in this open book solution, the Bible. The healing of Naaman, as described in 2 Kings um, chapter 5, exemplifies healing as a multifaceted process involving faith, obedience, and transformation. The following subpoints are just a few of the most common to take into consideration when seeking healing. A, the initial condition. Now, we, if you don't know about Naaman, Naaman's a commander of the Syrian army. He, he was, I mean, he did very well, um, well known to his king, suffered from rep leprosy. His condition was not only physical, but also a social stigma, isolating him from others. Because you see, in those times, um, leprosy, if you have leprosy, you can't be around people, right? Let's confirm that with a verse um, from God, right? 2 Kings 5 verse 1, 2 Kings 5 1, Amplified Classic. Naaman, commander of the army of the king of, Assyri of Syria, was a great man with his master, accepted and acceptable, because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, but he was a leper. Isn't it amazing in this verse itself, it shows you a lot of things that we Christians sometimes need to understand that when it comes to being whole and being one with God. Just when you look at he's done all those things and all those victory. Yes, anyway, I'm going on off topic again. B, desire for healing. Hearing about a prophet in Israel who could heal, Naaman sought out Elisha, demonstrating a willingness to pursue healing. Here we see the longing and understanding that God is the ultimate source of healing while also acknowledging his sovereignty. Let's confirm that. Two Corinth two Corinthians, two Kings. <laughs> We're getting one of two the Kings. Two Kings five, three to five. Two Kings five, three to five in the Apple Five Classic. She said to her mistress, Would that my Lord were with the prophet who is in Samaria, for he would heal him of his leprosy. Naaman went in and told his king. Thus and thus said the maid from Israel. And the king of Syria said, Go now, and I will send a letter to the king of Israel. And he departed and took with him ten talents of silver. 
6,000 shekels of gold and 10 changes of raiment. Mm. C. Instruction and obedience, which is part of the process of it, right? Eli um, Elisha instructed Naaman to wash in the Jordan River seven times. Initially, Naaman resisted, feeling that the rivers of his homeland were superior, which is said in the word of God, right? However, after the encouragement of his servants, he obeyed what the instruction. This demonstrates faith accompanied by obedience to God's commands leading to healing. Let's confirm that. 2 Kings 5.14. 2 Kings 5.14, the Amplified Classic. Then he went down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan, as the man of God had said, and his flesh was restored like that of a little child, and he was clean. Hey, he became more useful. <clears throat> yeah. D, gradual process. Naaman's healing occurred as he followed through with Elisha's direction. It wasn't instantaneous. The act of dipping, you know, seven times symbolized a process of faith and obedience cul culminating in his physical healing. Here we notice that trust and hope in God's goodness is a key. Let's confirm that. 2 Kings 5 verse 10. 2 Kings 5 verse 10 in the Amplified Classic. Elisha sent a messenger to him saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored and you shall be clean. And we know what happens, right? E. Spiritual transformation. Upon his healing, Naaman acknowledged the God of Israel, illustrating a transformation that went beyond physical restoration to a spiritual awakening and commitment. Let's confirm that with the verse, right? 2 Kings 5.15. 2 Kings 5.15. Then Naaman returned to the man of God, he and all his company, and stood before him. He said, Behold, now I know that there is no God in all the earth but in Israel. So now accept a gift from your servant. Mm. So. All right. So in today's study, as you just heard, as we just went through the word of God, we covered quite a few key points in relation to kingdom health. The main points covered today, and I'm talking just about the main points, there were subtopics as well, is number one, what is healing? Mm -hmm. We covered number two, the right posture for healing. Number three, why sickness? Number four, practical points for healing. We encourage you, if you haven't listened to this from the beginning, we encourage you to please go and re-listen and use these, if need be, in your cell groups, home groups, church, whatever, to help you to fully understand and cement these biblical truths to our Christian faith. Amen? Amen. All right. So finally, in summary of today's study, Kingdom Health, I would like to emphasize the following points. First, embrace the opportunity to seek God's guidance and wisdom through prayer and scripture. Trust in his sovereignty and goodness, especially during challenging times. Cultivate a habit of faith-filled prayers and actually and actively follow God's command. Open your heart to spiritual healing and restoration through forgiveness and a deeper relationship with God. Draw inspiration from Bible ex uh, biblical examples of healing and miracle to guide your journey. And then remember that healing as seen in the Bible is a rich and multifaceted experience. It encompasses physical, emotional, and spiritual aspect, and it flourishes through faith, trust, and obedience to God's word while celebrating his sovereignty and goodness. I would like to finish this perfect um, with this perfect quote by John G. Lake. This need to be removed, removed from the minds of God's people. The idea that divine healing is something disassociated or separated or separate from God's, uh, from Christ's salvation. It is not. Healing is simply the salvation of Jesus Christ having its divine action in a man's body. The same as it, as it had its divine action in a man's soul. How perfect is that? Amen? Amen. All right. Let me reinstate or re-say re or retell or whatever word you want to use this, um, this statement, this quote from John G. Lake. And not just for the believers, for, for unbelievers, for anybody out there, or not yet believers, anyone out there that thinks that the God of 
Jesus Christ, the God of the Christian faith, is not real. He's very real. And as John G. Lake said, this needs to be removed from the mind, especially the mind of God's people. The idea that divine healing is something dis dissociated or separate from Christ's salvation. It is not. Healing is simply the salvation of Jesus Christ having its divine action in a man's body. And that's talking about wholeness, spirit, soul, and body. Mm -hmm. The same as, as it had its divine action in a man's soul. What has that got to do with me? Well, the God of the Christian faith, he is God. And there is only one way, one truth in my life, and Amen. that is through Jesus Christ. You're not here by, an, by accident. This is a divine appointment. As 1 John 5, 4 to 5 tells us, for whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Again, I want to ask you, if this is your second time, third time, or if this is your first time, where are you putting your faith? Is it in money? Is it in vanity? Is it in gurus? Is it in whatever the so-called experts out there in the world? Where are you putting your faith? Who is he who overcomes the world? He will not be here if he did not realize there's something missing in your life. And you were not created for mediocrity. You were not created for just this world, enjoy this world, and then just go off into some soup heaven or whatever you want to call it. Um, it doesn't work like that. You know there's a bigger purpose for your life. So how do you overcome the world? How do you overcome the things of the world, the, the struggles, the, the, the lack of money, health, all those things? Well, the Word of God goes on to say, but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. You put your faith in Jesus Christ and the work, finished work that he finished on the cross. The word of God goes on to tell us, John 3, 16 to 17, tells us very clearly that for God so loved the world, so God does love you, even if you don't love him, he still loves you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son, talking about Jesus Christ, into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. 1 John 1 9 tells us very clearly where to start. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It's very, very simple. That word sin in its sim most simple definition, is when we try to live our lives without God. You were created by a loving, all-sovereign, all-powerful God that loves you so much that He created you, the only creation in all of the universe. He created you in His image. That's how much He loves you. And you are unique. We all know, even through science and things we've learned through school, that each and every single one of us has one unique fingerprint. Nobody has a copy of anything else. We're all unique. And that was and has to be through a divine creative miracle. And that's through Christ Jesus. That is through the Lord himself. What do I have to do, George? Very simple. Look at the screen and you'll see Romans 10, 9 to 10 tells us that if you confess with your mouth, just like I'm speaking to you out loud right now, Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You will be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So you speak out loud. You, you, you invite the Lord Jesus to become your Lord and Savior. You ask him, Lord, I need you. In your own, you have to mean it. The matter of the heart is the heart of the matter. You invite him to come and be your Lord. And then you choose to believe that God raised him from the dead in your place. In, on that cross, the cross that he took upon himself, that he died on, that should have been us, but he took it in our place. So you put your faith in what he did, and you will be saved from the moment you do that. Then Titus 3 verse 5, Ephesians 2 verse 8, and Acts 1 verse 8, amongst many others, goes on to say, then he saves us by grace through faith, the faith part being your part, you choose to put your faith in him. The gift of God washing away our sins and giving us the new joy of the indwelling Holy Spirit. And you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere. That's called the baptism of Holy Spirit and fire. 
We're going to be doing that. We're going to be praying right now together for the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire because we all need it. As believers, we need it. We don't just need salvation. Salvation in itself is super important, absolutely, eternally important. But we're still here on earth. Otherwise, God will get us saved and get us straight to heaven. Mm -hmm. We're here on earth with a major purpose. We are God's ambassadors. We are Christ's ambassadors, kings and priests, uh, living epistles, soldiers of the kingdom of God. We are the light of the world and salt of the earth, as his word says. And in order to do those things, in order to fulfill the calling that God has on our lives and, and efficiently be those things, we need to put our faith in in Holy Spirit, who's going to come and live inside of us when we invite him through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And we need to live and walk with him. With him. And we require spiritual gifts in order to do that. We really do. So we're going to invite him and he's going to come bearing those gifts and he's going to use them and he's going to comfort you and he's going to correct you and he's going to love you and he's going to protect you and all those things. Amen. Amen. Let's do it together. Lord, I thank you right now for the privilege of play, praying with our brothers and sisters throughout the world. Those that are listening, those that are watching us right now, we do this in prayer, in unity. In the mighty name of Jesus, we are hungry and thirsty, Lord, for righteousness. As your word says, those that are hungry and thirsty for righteousness shall be filled. You are righteousness. You are our righteousness. But we are hungry for the spiritual things, for the joy of your indwelling Holy Spirit. So now we invite your Holy Spirit, baptize us afresh with a fresh fire, revival fire, Lord. Ignite a fire in us and through us that the world will watch us burn for you, that the world will be excited and come to you and see a, a, a fire that cannot be quenched for our God is a consuming fire. Yes. Right now we say, come Lord, come, set us on fire in Jesus' mighty name. Amen Man. and amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Congratulations. Welcome, Welcome back, back to the kingdom family. Heaven is rejoicing over you right now. I encourage you, we encourage you to please get connected with a Bible teaching, Holy Spirit filled church. You need the body of Christ around you. It's not the people that are perfect. It's God. It's Christ Jesus. He's your stand up. He's the hope of, of glory in us. Amen. So Amen. But you do need to get connected. It's very important in the world that we are living. If you can't do that in person, get connected online. There's many online churches now uh, out there. Uh, I understand because of the way the world is going, but get connected with a Bible teaching, Holy Spirit filled kingdom family. Amen. Amen. All right. This brings us to our second part of the program, which is called the collective, where we spend time th with those that are watching, those that are listening and we pray, we prophesy, whatever Holy Spirit leads us to do. If you have specific prayer requests, we always encourage you, please start writing them in advance in the Facebook live chat section so we can get onto them. And if this is your first time, if you're watching it for the first time, drop us a line. Let us know where you're from, what country you're from. Uh, it's always encouraging and exciting for us, inspiring as well to know that there's brothers and sisters out there. There's people out there being touched by the living word of God, by his presence, by his glory. Amen. Amen. All right. This brings us to the collective. <laughs> 